every cell in your body needs water to function. The benefits of a well-hydrated body include organs that function better, joints that move more smoothly, less risk of cancer, and improved circulation. Being well-hydrated can also improve sleep, mood, reaction time, and cognition. Dehydration, on the other hand, has been linked to all kinds of things that most people want to avoid, including cardiac stress, headaches and migraines, fatigue, reduced muscle function, and weight gain. If you were to suddenly lose half of your body water, you'd die. You'd basically turn into a mummy who has nightmares about Brendan Fraser. So, it's a good thing to stay hydrated, but this video is going to go deeper to understanding why, at a cellular level, hydration is important for you to speak and sing better. How much water is enough? How does enough affect your voice? And what happens if you don't have enough? Welcome to The Singing Hole, where we examine how ordinary creatures create extraordinary sounds. In order to see how your voice is affected by hydration, we're going to dive deep into your throat with science. Your vocal folds are located inside of your larynx, and as air passes through the larynx, the vocal folds can vibrate to create a pitch. So essentially, to sing a note, your vocal folds go wacka 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 as the air is coming out. One of the main ways we can measure how hydration affects singing is by gauging how much breath pressure is necessary for the vocal folds to start oscillating, or vibrating, at a regular rate. That number is called PTP, or Phonation Threshold Pressure. If you need to exert more energy and more breath pressure to create a sound, the PTP is higher. If you need to exert less to create a sound, the PTP is lower. Phonation Threshold Pressure is very important when discussing hydration and your voice, and we'll come back to it later. I'll also talk about the quickest way to hydrate your voice, but first, we need to talk about your vocal anatomy. Your vocal folds can be divided into three tissue layers, a muscle, a ligament, and a mucous membrane. The innermost layer of the vocal folds is a muscle called the thyroretinoid or vocalis muscle. This is the densest portion of the vocal fold, and when engaged, it shortens and thickens the vocal folds. The vocal ligament lies next to the vocalis muscle. It's very stretchy and springy, being composed of elastin and collagen. Think of this connective tissue like a rubber band. <laughs> and next to the vocal ligament is the mucous membrane, or mucosa. There's a thin layer of epithelium in the top part of the mucosa, Epithelium also lines tons of parts of your body, like your organs and even your skin. The main purpose of this epithelium is to protect the tissue beneath the rest of your vocal fold. The epithelium is plump and filled with fluid and it secretes mucus. Have you ever had dried up boogers? Imagine that, but on your vocal folds. Ooh. It might make singing and even speaking kind of difficult, right? Okay, it doesn't usually get that bad in your vocal tract, but when you're dehydrated, stuff essentially gets thicker. Even your blood flow slows down because it's thicker and more difficult to move. That makes it more difficult for muscles, like the vocalis muscle, to work. They become stiff and more likely to swell. You want to avoid stiffness and swelling in the larynx, especially if you want to hit high notes, because high notes require very quick vibrations on thinned out vocal folds. To make up for stiff or swollen vocal folds, many singers will increase air pressure from their lungs, which forces the vocal folds to work harder. 
which in turn creates more swelling in the vocal tract. It's a vicious cycle and it can get exponentially worse. Also bad news, you're more likely to damage tissue when you're dehydrated. Keep in mind, delayed onset muscle soreness from dehydration post intense exercise often takes 24 to 48 hours to set in. It's like when you go to the gym. You don't usually feel super sore right afterwards, but the day after that, mm, that can be rough. Back to your vocal folds. The ligament and mucous membrane portions of your vocal folds are highly viscous. That means they're specifically easy to vibrate. And that's partly because they're filled with lots of water. They're easy to jiggle like jello. But suppose a person doesn't drink enough water? Or to make things easier, imagine what would happen if you could magically zap that jello and remove the water in it. Wait, actually, that's how you make jello. For those of you who have no experience in making jello, jello is made by adding powder to water. First, boiling water, and then cold water, and then you refrigerate it. That's it. Jello is jiggly because of the water. Remember that top layer of the vocal folds that secretes mucus? Imagine what would happen if you were to zap even just some of the water from the mucus. Not to the point of dried out boogers, but maybe enough that it becomes thick and phlegmy. You'd want to cough that out, right? And consider what would happen if the layers underneath also lost some water. If a person isn't adequately hydrated, the overall viscosity of the vocal fold tissue could decrease, which in turn would make it more difficult for the vocal folds to jiggle. And once again, it would be difficult to sing the higher pitches, which require faster oscillation. And here we come back to our term PTP, phonation threshold pressure. A study done in 1994 by Verdolini, Tizza, and Fennell showed an inverse relationship between hydration level and high-pitched phonation. In other words, the more dehydrated a voice, the harder it was to create high pitches. They used PTP to measure this. A particularly fun study in 1999 also used PTP to judge the effects of hydration on a larynx an excised canine larynx to be specific. They discovered that PTP went up when the larynges were first dehydrated, but returned to normal levels after being bathed in isotonic saline water for 30 minutes. And for those of you wondering about the saline water bathing, no, this does not mean that if you take a quick dip in the ocean, your larynx will be instantly rehydrated. However, there is a really interesting saline solution quick fix that I'll tell you about in just a bit. So quick summary so far, it's harder to sing when you're dehydrated, especially the high notes. Now, beyond the physical difficulty in just producing sound, your brain actually gets smaller when you're dehydrated. You only need to be 1% dehydrated to experience a 5% decrease in cognitive function. A 2% decrease in brain hydration can result in short-term memory loss. So the next time you forget where your keys are, maybe get a glass of water while looking for them. A more recent study showed even lower numbers that a loss of 0.72% negatively affected both memory and attention. So if you're dehydrated, you'll have more problems remembering things, such as that two-hour set or three-hour long Russian opera. Want to make your life easier? Stay hydrated. But wait, how do you stay hydrated exactly? And how long before singing do you need to drink water for it to be effective? One of the biggest misconceptions that many people have is that they immediately can hydrate by drinking a glass of water. This just isn't true. Water goes down your food tube, your esophagus. Your larynx isn't in your esophagus. It's at the top of your trachea. If water went down your larynx, you'd fill your lungs up with fluid, which would be really, really bad. So that water you're swallowing, it doesn't touch your vocal folds. 
in order for hydration from water you drink to get to your vocal folds, it has to go through your digestive system, get into your blood, then eventually reach your vocalis muscle, and then make its way through the ligament and finally into the mucosa, the top layer of your vocal folds. This all takes time. How much time? That's difficult to say because it's difficult to isolate systemic hydration. It depends on a lot of things like how dehydrated a person is, how many electrolytes they have in their system, what else they're ingesting, if they've recently worked out, the list goes on and on. This type of systemic hydration is dependent on all of the things affecting your body's system. So we don't have an exact number. Two hours is a commonly quoted general estimate, but hospitals will often take 24 hours to rehydrate a severely dehydrated person through an IV. Another study was done in 2002, again by Verdolini, Tizza, and colleagues, and this one examined the biological mechanisms underlying voice changes due to dehydration. One of the big take-home points from the study was that, once again, PTP increases with dehydration, but specifically, there is a delayed onset to see the effects. They appear about 5 to 12 hours after the dehydration occurred. In other words, not only does systemic hydration take a long time to affect your voice, systemic dehydration also takes a long time to affect your voice. This means that the entire day before a big gig really does matter. Pro singers and pro speakers should be drinking lots of water and electrolytes the entire day. Drink a glass when you first wake up. Drink a glass before you go to sleep. And while the eight ounces eight times per day rule doesn't hurt, another guideline is to calculate one third of your body weight and drink that much in fluid ounces. And definitely, if you're thirsty, drink water as the feeling of thirst isn't triggered until your body is already dehydrated. But what happens if you forget to drink water and the show is suddenly upon you and you need hydration now? Is there such a thing as instant vocal hydration? Nebulizers. Nebulizers are the answer. Most people are likely to connect the term nebulizer with the thing people who have asthma stick in their mouth and take a hit of. A nebulizer is a fantastic medical device which turns liquid into very fine mist that can quickly and directly be administered through a mask or mouthpiece. Two well-known brands of nebulizers that you can use for your voice are My Pure Mist and Vocal Mist. Nebulized saline has been shown to help with rapid vocal rehydration. Yes, there is a rapid answer. In a study conducted in 2007 by Tanner and Roy, PTP values decreased immediately after nebulization. So five minutes after using a nebulizer, it was easier for the study participants to make a sound. Does this mean you should forget about systemic hydration and just nebulize before the show? No. Your brain still needs to function, and we don't know how deep the hydration goes into your vocal folds, but we do know that using a nebulizer might make singing easier. By the way, lots of singers also swear by steaming. It hasn't been shown to be as effective as nebulizers, but I particularly love the way it also clears my sinuses. If there's one helpful thing to walk away from this video knowing, it's Stay hydrated. It will make vocalizing easier. And if you have any questions about your voice or larynx or about animal sounds, let me know in the comments below this video. Until next time, keep on exploring sound and make weird noises.